Let's continue on with part two of designing a mold in Creo Parametric. In this part, we are going to create the volumes that are going to eventually end up as our inserts, the plug, the sliders on the sides here. All right, let's go back to the previous model where we left off at the end of part one. Let's see, I'm going to need to see some datum planes. I know there are way too many on the screen. Let me turn off some of the ones that I don't want. Uh, let's see, I don't think I need the parting plane either. This is where we finished at the end of the last session. We created an automatic mold volume based off of the workpiece and then did the reference part cutout. Let me hide the, oops, I said pick show. Let me hide the automatic volume so that you can see the workpiece and some reference geometry inside of there. First off, I am going to need a plug to go here in the top. I'm not going to be able to do this with the core and cavity. And I'm going to create a volume for that by revolving. Now, let's see what happens when I try to do this. A little bit of a spoiler, it's not going to work. Let's go to create a new mold volume. I'll click on the mold volume icon. That's going to give me the dashboard. Let me start off by creating a sketch. And the sketch that I need, I actually turned off one of the datum planes that I need to see. Let me see, it might be this one over here. I'm going to sketch on the datum plane called mold front, which I did hide. Let's use that. And let's see, for the orientation, let me choose this surface to face the top of the screen. I will go into sketch mode. And now let me turn off my datum plane display in order to reduce the screen clutter. And I want to grab the surfaces that intersect the sketch plane in order to use that as reference geometry. So normally I would try to use the project command and you know, I'm trying to pick over here and nothing is highlighting. I might be able to get that edge over there, but then it's going to give me a curve. Oops, sorry about that. It's giving me a curve that's not correct at all. Let me close out of the project command and use a little undo to get rid of that. I could say, okay, maybe I need to grab some sketch references. So I'll go to sketch references. And it's got the default coordinate system and the datum plane called right. I'm going to try query selecting to that surface. And I'm not getting it. It's not picking it up. So then uh, let's try the use cross section. I want the intersection of that surface with the sketch plane. Oh, there we go. That looks like I have it. Let me try to click on it with the left mouse button. And for some reason, it tells me that the selected surface does not intersect the sketching plane. It's not working. So for some reason, I'm just not able to grab the reference geometry. That'll give me the shape of the plug that I want. So I need to go back and create some other supplemental geometry. Let me cancel out of sketch mode. I'm going to select the reference part that we used or created in the last video. And I'll open that up. Let me turn on my datum plane display. Let's go to the inheritance feature and I'm going to show it so I can see. Oops. There we go. Let's grab some of these default datums over here to figure out which ones we want to use. Ah, let me try layers. Look at all these different layers over here. All right. So for creating or being able to grab the shape of those surfaces, I'm going to create a cross section and then do a curve from cross section. I showed how to do that in other videos. Let's go to the view tab. I will create a planar section. And by the way, no normally this should not be something that you have to do. For some reason, just this geometry isn't working. So I'm going to try some other tricks. Let that's good for the cross section. Let's rename it. Hit the check mark. And so now I've got the cross section. Let's go back to the model tab. And I can go to the datum overflow and create a curve from cross section. And if I scroll down to the bottom of my model tree now, there you see the curve that was created. There's the cross section. Let's then get rid of the cross section. Let me click on it and deactivate it. And 
Make sure that the hatching is not displayed. Oops, actually turn on the display of the hatching. There we go. Turn off the display of the hatching. And we can see the curve that was created at the cross section. So a little extra work I had to do in order to get the necessary geometry that I can use for creating my sketch. All right, let's go back up over here. Let me go back to my layers and just reset status just so that the stuff that was not visible before is not visible anymore. Let me close out of the reference part. Let me turn off my, oh, this is the wrong model. Let's go to the correct model. All right, back here in the correct model, let's once again go to the mold volume command. I'm going to create a sketch. The sketch will be on the datum plane called mold front. And once again, I'll choose this surface to face the top of the screen. Let's hit the sketch button over here. And now I should be able to grab some of those different curves for use edge. Let me turn off my datum plane display for a moment. I will need it again. But let's go to the project command. And now I can grab the portions of that curve that I want in order to find my shape. So hopefully this is something that you're not going to have to do all the time. It's just in this particular situation, I had to jump through some hoops in order to get geometry that I need. Let me go to my sketch references and pick this surface. Make sure that I get it in there. Let's go to our sketch view. And so there I have the basic shape that I need. Let's throw in a center line for our axis of revolution. And sketch in the rest of our lines. Let me create a line going from here over to the center line and then over here. And I think I might have gotten one more entity than I needed. Let me use our friend squiggle trim to get rid of the portion that I don't want. And there we have the shape of the plug that we are going to. Oh, wait, actually, I'm going to the wrong surface. Let me undo some stuff. Yeah, sometimes I make mistakes when I'm doing my videos. Let's go back to our sketch view. And I need to go to this top surface over here. Let's create some lines, go from there to there there and create a line that goes from here up to the top and then close off that's the shape of the plug that i want i was going to the wrong surface i was going to the top of the reference model instead of the top of my workpiece all right let's hit the check mark to get out of sketch mode And let me just drag it over here. All right, for the volume, we want to revolve it. And since the sketch was still selected, it used it. So there you can see the shape of the plug that we are going to make. Let me hit the check mark over here. And I'm still in the edit mold volume dashboard. Let me deselect everything because one thing that I like to do is rename the mold volumes. If you take a look in the model tree, you can see that we have revolve one and then here's the name of the mold volume. The way that you change it is by using this button for the properties within the edit mold volume dashboard. And I'm going to call this my plug volume and hit the enter key. And that should be everything that I need for this first mold volume for one of my inserts. Let's hit the check mark from the edit mold volume dashboard. So that is good for the first one. Next up, I think I'm going to need some sliders. Let's see if we do or not. For calculating that, I'm going to create another mold volume. And then we have this slider command over here. When I click on the slider command, we get this dialog box. And the important thing about this is that it's got this function here to calculate undercut boundaries. And as the tooltip says, it will calculate surfaces which close all undercuts in the reference part. I will click on the button, 
it does some calculations. And here it's showing quilt one and quilt two. If I zoom in, you can see that it has some volumes there highlighting in light purple, which shows where we're going to have undercuts in the model. In other words, that's where we're going to need some sliders. And I'm going to select both of these quilts using the control key and then use the add button to move them into the include column. Here they have an optional projection plane. I don't need to use that. Let's hit the check mark and you can see some of those volumes there. Let me deselect everything and let me go to the properties. I'm not actually going to use this volume later, but I do want to create one so that you see what it is. Let's hit the check mark out of here. Let me hide our workpiece. And so there you can see the different undercuts. If I pick it in the model tree over there, those are the volumes that are necessary. Now you can use these actual volumes when you are creating your different sliders. But one thing I know is that I'm going to use an automatic parting line, which is going to be around this surface over here. So really I only need like this portion here. I can actually create my sliders just by doing an extrude. That's going to be the width of this little tab going up to that surface. And then when I start doing my different operations with subtracting my volumes, it's going to end up being the right size. I'll show that one two videos from now when we go into our process of creating the components from the mold volumes by doing the various different splits. Let me hide these undercuts. Again, I created, but I'm not actually going to use them. Let me go back to my workpiece, make it visible. And now let's create a couple of other different mold volumes that we're going to use as sliders. I'll click on the mold volume icon. Once again, let's do a sketch. I will sketch on this surface and it's having that surface face the bottom of the screen. I actually like that. Let's go to the sketch button and I'm going to go to my sketch references. I'm going to add in the tabs uh, side surfaces so I can use them as references. Grab that one as well. Let's close out of the sketch references dialog box and go to our sketch view. And so there I know how long exactly my sketch needs to be. Now let's just sketch in a, a rough shape. Let's create some lines, go from here to here, down over here, and about over here and here. Just making sort of like an upside down T shape. Lock into that reference and go to there. That's good. Now let's put in some dimensions. Let me go to a non-shaded mode because that workpiece is making it hard for me to see. And let's throw in some dimensions. Let's make it from here to here and make this a value of say 0.5. Let's then make this also a value of 0.5. Let's see, it looks like we have some kind of equal length constraint. Let's get rid of that. I didn't want that when I was sketching. Let's then put in an actual equal length. I want this and this to be equal. And let's make this, a, let me get out of equal constraints mode by using the middle mouse button. Then I can double click on the dimension to change it. Let's make that a value of two and let's make this one also a value of two. So that's the simple shape that I need for my slider. Let's go back to a shading with edges mode. I will hit the check mark to complete my sketch. And with the sketch still selected, let's do an extrude. Let's flip the direction. I'm going to right click over the depth drag handle and change this to selected and just pick that vertical surface there. That's good for this one. Let's hit the check mark and then deselect everything so I can go to the properties. I'm going to call this slider one volume and 
That's all I need for that one. Let's hit the check mark. Now I'm just going to repeat the process. I'm going to create another mold volume. And this time I will create a sketch, but on the opposite surface. This one over here. Let's hit the sketch button. And I'll use the project command with the loop option. That way I can just query select to this surface and pick it and get the exact sketch that I need. Let's hit the check mark. There we go. And once more extrude. Let's flip the depth direction. Right click over the depth drag handle to select it and grab that small surface there. And hit the check mark to complete the extrude. Deselect everything. Go to the properties icon just so I can rename this. This will be the slider to volume. And hit the check mark to complete that mold volume. So now I've created the three different mold volumes I need for my plug and my two sliders. In the next video, we will create our automatic parting line and also create our parting surface. And then in the fourth video, we will use that for doing the splits between the inserts, the core, and the cavity. And then in the video after that, we will create our molding and do the mold opening analysis. So again, this is the second of five videos where we go through a bit of a complex process for developing the mold for this complicated part. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.